Are you needing to get something done, but your loved one or your client with dementia is constantly needing your attention or they're constantly following you around and driving you nuts? If that sounds like you, then you are going to get a ton from this because in this video, I am going to give you three ideas and teach you how you can come up with an activity that your person can do independently or by themselves so that you can get a little bit more peace and things done within your day or have them do something that isn't just watching TV all day long. And if you do end up trying one of these and you get a win, let us know in the comments so that we can celebrate you. And while you're at it, give this video a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so that you never miss a video ever again. So if all that sounds good, let's jump right in. So before we dive into the ideas, I use a three-point checklist in order to figure out what independent activity is going to work for the person that I'm working with. And I'm gonna share that with you real quick. So here are the three things I look for. One, what can they still do? Can they stand? Can they hold things? Can they walk around? This will make a huge impact on the activities you have to choose from. Two, who or what does your person care about? Thinking about this will bring more purpose to the activity that you are doing. If you tie the activity to a person or something that they care about, they're much more likely to do it versus in random activity you're throwing at them. And third, what do you have on hand? So what supplies do you have? So with all that being said, I will give my examples with the checklist so that you get an idea of how you would come up with this. And you can either use these exact ideas if it works for your person, or you also have the checklist to help you uh, come up with something custom for your person with dementia. So in our first example, dad is following you around the house and asking, what's happening next? What's happening next? So here are some things you can consider when trying to give dad an activity. So first thing to consider is what he can still do. Dad can obviously walk around because he's following you and dad still has some pretty good hand-eye coordination. So that gives you a few things to play with as far as independent activities and makes him a really great candidate for that. Second is what dad was interested in before dementia. So dad was Mr. Fix-It. He was somebody that really loved to be able to do things for other people and make sure that uh, the faucet or screws or all these things were fixed. And third, we know that we have some Legos and we have some plastic pipes and some plastic screws from an old plumbing project that we had a while back. So a great independent activity for dad would be to give him some of the plastic pipes and say, hey dad, I can't figure out how to fix this. Do you think you could fix this for me? And you know, let's just say, Dad is in a little bit of the later stages of dementia, getting him some Legos and saying that these need to be put together to be fixed is also a great way to give him something independent to do even as he moves through dementia. A good rule of thumb is in the earlier stages it needs to look more uh, realistic, something that probably is what they used to do but just way simplified down. And in the later stages it can be more focused on simplicity and safety, and they're probably not going to notice that, you know, it's a kid's toy. Second example is mom is constantly calling you from the living room when you're trying to get work done in the other room. And it's super, super frustrating. So again, let's go through the checklist and see what we can have mom do. So firstly, what can mom still do? So mom's in a wheelchair, so she can't really get up and walk around. But kind of like dad in the previous example, she still has okay hand-eye coordination. She can still see okay-ish. It's not great, but it's okay. So second, what she used to be into and who she cares about. She used to be an art teacher for a school and she cares a lot about the kids. So that is a good place to bring this activity a little bit more purpose for her. And lastly, what you have on hand is the internet, a printer, a few markers, and some paper to print out, some dementia-friendly type coloring pages off the internet for free. What you could do is tell mom 
Hey mom, the kids at the school are struggling with this art project and they need some examples. Do you think you can make them some examples with this? Hand her a few markers, hand her the dementia friendly coloring and have her have added. Again, the most important point is that you aren't just throwing stuff at her. You are giving some purpose behind what it is that she's doing and you're setting her up to be successful. And our third example is our client Barbara at the nursing home. She screams the second you try to walk away and clearly it's very difficult to get any work done this way. So here's something we can try with our checklist. So first, Barbara cannot leave the bed. However, she still can speak. So there's some minimal communication she can do with you. Second, Barbara loves Frank Sinatra and she loves listening to music. So this is another great thing that you have as well as you happen to have a music player on hand. So what you can say to Barbara is assure her first, Barbara, I am gonna be right back. But until then, why don't you listen to some Frank Sinatra and have Frankie keep you company? And let me know if you like him when I come back. Again, having the assurance that you're gonna come back will be helpful in that moment. And her listening to Frank Sinatra is a great thing to have her do while you are gone to have a little bit of peace and have her not scream bloody murder the second you leave. So there you have it three examples and a solid way to come up with an activity your person with dementia can do on their own. And this way is one, figuring out what they can still do, two, knowing what their previous interests were and who they care about, and three, the items you have on hand. So again, if you get a win with any of these suggestions, let us know in the comments. And if you wanna share this with more people, join our free Facebook group. It's an awesome community and you're going to love it here. And if you love getting wins in YouTube, you are going to love getting wins with something I call Caregiver Wins, which is a monthly challenge we have in the Facebook group. So definitely join the Facebook group for that. And with all that being said, I will see you in the next one.